Um, in, uh, by David and colleagues Salas and Washer, and uh, a new paper, also the same vintage, basically, by Mir and West. And what I'm basically going to do is to examine this new literature, which uh, uh, is, I put in the context of the new, new minimum wage uh, literature, um, and uh, to see the sensitivity of our results uh, to the criticisms uh, uh, entered by David and by Amir and West. Although we are, uh, if you like, bit players in this controversy, uh, because our research initially uh, published in 2012 was conducted independently of work by Juby, Lester, and Reich, uh, but reaches some fairly similar uh, conclusions, but much less strident. Um, and uh, this has been criticized in a very important piece uh, by, by, by David, published, sub I've called it 2013, but it was actually published in the May issue of the uh, 2014 ILRR, uh, but I'll stick with it because he may have removed the quote uh, from, the, uh, uh, from the ILRR paper that I want to end my lecture with, uh, and so I can actually give a chapter and verse on that. Amir and West is uh, a new, uh, uh, rather different uh, set of uh, papers. But what we found is sort of typical in this, uh, uh, if you like, in this new, new minimum wage literature. Um, we're looking at uh, an archetypal uh, low wage sector, which is NAICS 722, which we call a restaurant and bars, a little bit informally. And this is uh, an archetypal uh, minimum wage sector, or low wage sector, in that it has the highest percentage of workers at or below the minimum wage. And uh, we basically uh, augment uh, the basic two-step model with a geographic specific trend, as in fact a county specific linear trend. And uh, we find uh, that the findings from the basic two-step model um, were biased towards finding a negative employment effect of minimum wages, basically because minimum wages are increased most or are increased in, uh, in those sectors which are tending to exhibit down long, uh, downward long-term trends in, uh, in employment. So David has criticized this research, and as have Mir and West. Um, and the two critiques, David's and Mir and West critiques, either build upon the finding that when you do allow for geographic specific uh, linear trends, the negative effects of minimum wages do not disappear. Um, and in, uh, as, as, is, as we report, let's say, for this restaurant and bar sector. And uh, the Mir and West argument is that uh, if the minimum wage effects, uh, negative minimum wage, significant minimum wage effects do disappear, it's because of employment uh, dynamics. The wider backdrop to the study is a new meta-analysis of around 27, uh, exactly 27 modern studies of the impact of minimum wages um, um, by Wolfson and Bellman, uh, which basically argues uh, that there is no economic uh, or a statistically uh, consistently significant uh, relationship uh, between minimum wages and, uh, and uh, employment of low-wage workers. I certainly don't want to go along with that conclusion, but I'm basically looking at the sensitivity of the results we reported in 2012 uh, to the criticisms, very interesting criticisms, uh, made by David and uh, others. And I find this a learning experience. For example, uh, I found it extremely useful, uh, the idea that one should be very careful in running regressions uh, to take account of, uh, if you like, recessions. I'll elaborate on this. 
But the basic idea is that you would expect to find more adverse effects of minimum wage increases during recessions than outside of recessions. Now, although we don't actually find that, we do find in a paper in Labor Economics in 2013, uh, we do find that uh, there are bigger minimum negative, uh, there are more adverse uh, negative employment effects of minimum wages in high uh, unemployment areas. So it is very similar, and we learned uh, from that criticism. And in running this paper and writing this paper for this conference, we were uh, basically hoping, uh, to, we were hoping to learn more uh, about what might have been driving our results. OK. Um, there are basically two approaches to geographic variation in this new, new uh, minimum wage research. And I've isolated as exemplars of these two, either the geographic specific linear, linear trend, or if you like the case study approach writ large using larger panels, let's call it a border county approach. Uh, I've attributed that to Juby Lest and Reich. Uh, this was published in the Review of Economics and Statistics. This was published in Industrial Relations. And I take these as the exemplars rather than our own work say here, because they are the most strident uh, representatives of the argument that minimum wages don't cost jobs. We've always been very cautious in, 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 in making that uh, inference and making sure that our observations are not taken uh, beyond the context that we're looking at. Um, the outcome of this criticism, either this case study approach you know, um, this is basically the difference in difference model, Pennsylvania um, and New Jersey experiment, but to, uh, applied, if you like, to all contiguous uh, uh, counties uh, in the United States. Uh, David would criticize the, the number of counties that are actually being examined. Uh, this basic approach came out with this uh, uh, outcome. And that is that minimum wages uh, do not have statistically significant effects on uh, unemployment, um, although they do have uh, statistically significant effects on earnings. OK. I'm not going to say much about the cross-border model, because we've criticized it fairly uh, heavily in our originally 2012 paper. I haven't got time to go into the criticism, but uh, I'm very suspicious of it. However, uh, there is, if you like, uh, some perhaps some catharsis going on uh, with uh, the uh, uh, construction of uh, synthetic counterfactuals and whether these are really localized as as UB, Lester, and Reich would have us believe, or whether they can be drawn uh, more widely and uh, with less saturated uh, models. Um, so I'm not going to spend much time on that at all because I don't like it very much. And I'm going to be looking at the limitations of the state. The paper is looking at the limitations of the state panel model uh, with state or county-specific uh, linear trends. Uh, there is some link, as I said, uh, between, uh, between the, the two, uh, and that's uh, basically because of uh, these synthetic control estimators uh, associated with replacing, if you like, census division time period interactions uh, in, the, uh, uh, in, 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 the, in the paper, uh, uh, if you like, uh, by uh, the, the, the people in uh, uh, Allegretto, Duby, and, and, and Reich. Okay. Um, so let me just then uh, continue, if I may, um, with the issues that David uh, and colleagues uh, criticize these uh, specific uh, geographic linear trend uh, uh, models. Basically, those are the criticisms uh, and recommendations that uh, David uh, and colleagues make. 
think you can read them as well as I can, can say them. And basically, when they, if you like, use higher order trends, exclusions of subperiods of steep recessions in estimating those state level trends while retaining the whole sample period, or when they use uh, a Hodrick Prescott filter to detrend the data, they come up with, if you like, uh, significant uh, effects of minimum wages, negative effects of minimum wages on employment. My apologies for the error here, uh, 2011. And uh, that is the finding when uh, David's uh, cr uh, criticisms of the use of this linear trend model are taken into account. And this is what we have to deal with. The criticism of Mir and West is rather different. Um, Basically, they say that all that, what's really going on here is a question of employment dynamics. And the pro in the process, the uh, effect of minimum wages on employment levels is attenuated. And this is the basic reason. Uh, any post-treatment deviation in employment growth caused by the treatment will attenuate an estimated static treatment effect if the specification includes a single trend for the pre- and post-treatment periods. And that is basically their criticism, and that's basically their reason uh, for, uh, if you like, uh, excluding, uh, excluding uh, 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 the use of, uh, of, of uh, this linear trend. They basically argue that the effect of minimum wages will be upon employment growth rather than employment levels, even if the cumulative effect of uh, uh, reduced employment growth uh, after some years is uh, a sufficiently long time is substantive. But it's not going to be picked up. Um, they basically report that a 10% increase in the minimum wage uh, uh, reduces the rate of job growth by approximately one quarter in the first year following uh, the implementation of the minimum wage. And of course, the context uh, is uh, in the popularization of this argu arg argument, the 40% increase in the minimum wage proposed by the Obama administration. All right. So. How destructive are these criticisms uh, by David and uh, Mirren West of the use of, sorry, I've overshot. Uh, how destructive are they of the, uh, the, the basic finding that uh, this uh, term is, uh, uh, the inclusion of this term makes the, renders the coefficient estimate phi on the log minimum wage uh, uh, statistically, uh, basically statistically insignificant. Um, when you adopt, basically, uh, uh, you take account of the criticisms made of this approach by David and colleagues and Miriam West. Okay, now we're uh, basically uh, arguing in the original paper here using data from the a qu a quarterly census of employment and wages estimates over the period 1990-2005 uh, that basically if you run the equation without this you get highly significant well, you get significant coefficient estimates on the minimum wage but when you introduce that uh, this becomes statistically insignificant. So what we've got to do uh, according to David and colleagues is basically allow the uh, state-specific trends to be of a higher order than linear. And this is basically what happens when we uh, use uh, higher or order terms. Uh, last four columns. First of all, we run the model with no trends. We have a significantly negative effect. Uh, no county-specific uh, 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 trend variable. In there, we get the significantly negative effect 
uh, this is the elasticity, of course, uh, uh, when we basically introduce the uh, linear trend, it disappears, or the significance disappears. And when we introduce the higher order terms, we do actually find a two significant uh, coefficient estimates. So that's rather interesting. Although, if you look at those, uh, this is highly significant. This is only marginally significant. But this is uh, what we were, were warned, uh, warned about. So summarizing that. In these two instances, uh, we have estimated minimum wage effects that are significant. The other coefficients are little affected by polynomial detrending, other than this effect uh, on unemployment, which changes to positive and significant, which is perverse. Uh, but let's just say these are decidedly mixed, effect, uh, mixed uh, results. Uh, but the main point, I think, uh, that we're dealing with, and um, this is something we have to be very careful of as well later on, is that the minimum wage elasticities are, are modest. Notice the dis difference between here and here and here. Uh, all right. Now, uh, the, one of the other suggestions uh, that uh, uh, David and colleagues make is that we should exclude periods of steep recessions in estimating state level trends while retaining the whole sample period uh, to estimate minimum wage effects and also the use of a Hodrick Prescott filter to detrend the data. So here we've got the estimates of the minimum wage elasticity, summary estimates using post-1993 trends, leaving out the recession, and then peak-to-peak -peak trends, and then the Hodrick Prescott filter, uh, which yields a, uh, a small uh, uh, statistically significant coefficient estimate. So uh, it doesn't look, at least in uh, for our sample period, which in Addison uh, and the Blackburn and Corti 2012 was um, as shown here from 1990 to 2005. It doesn't look uh, as if that were uh, it, it, that worked, um, if you like, too well. Uh, just summarizing. So only the Hodrick Prescott filter produces a marginally significant effect, similar elasticity as in the previous case. Um, I'm no expert on, on, on the uh, Hodrick Prescott filter, uh, but I am familiar with the criticism of it that it is a mechanical, uh, rather mecha of a rather mechanical nature, uh, with the filter tending to find cycles in the data uh, when the cycles are not present. And uh, uh, I'd refer you to the work of Cogley and Nason 1995 in the Journal of Economic Dynamics and Control. But I don't want to make that as a cheap shot. I'm just a little bit worried, as a lot of economists are, labor economists are, with these procedures. But David should come back and say, well, why don't you estimate it over a period that we were looking at, too? And so what we have here is that we extended the data as far as we possibly could, which is more or less the same uh, as uh, 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 David's period. And we repeat the previous two tables. So here we have higher order. Uh, uh, we have polynomials. We have no trends. We have a, a, a simple uh, linear trend. And uh, we then use these other detrending methods, uh, post-1993 trends, peak-to-peak -peak trends, and then the HP filter. And we run the things again. And what do we find? Uh, we find slightly weaker results, actually, than in, in the first case. Uh, this is uh, no trends is no longer significant. There is uh, there are uh, interesting a significant result of again small elasticity uh, for the minimum wage as a uh, you know the simple linear trend, and this third order polynomial. Uh, we also get uh, an elasticity of, uh, uh, of, much the same, uh, of much the same order. 
no re significant results here uh, other than uh, for the Hodrick Prescott filter. So, summarizing. Um, again, we get, uh, we get slightly weaker results, of course, for the, uh, as I said, uh, in this extended period than we did earlier for the uh, polynomials. Uh, but uh, we do get the same again, very similar result uh, um, for the Hodrick Prescott filter. But uh, I think it's important to recognize that we are seeing some effects here. And uh, th this is part of a, a learning process. Uh, that I am prepared to, to, uh, to work on further. Now let's get on to the Mir and West application. Uh, some preliminaries first. Um, we basically consider the Mir and West criticism an argument that minimum wages may have lagged responses. But we see no reason uh, to get rid of uh, a statistically significant variable such as uh, the linear uh, geographic specific linear trends for two reasons. There's no collinearity problem in our data and minimum wages secondly are not causing a fall uh, in the trend in employment growth uh, in uh, areas raising the minimum wage. And the, the evidence is to the contrary. So we uh, have that criticism. The basic equation they use is a rate of change in employment, uh, they difference employment, and they teach all the right-hand side variables in levels. This basic equation is hard uh, to defend. It is fairly uh, common these days as a first approximation to a fully dynamic specification, uh, but we are, if you like, much happier to recast the, uh, the model in terms of a fully differenced uh, equation. And so what happens when we run their model, uh, their basic model? Let me just uh, show you the results. We are basically introducing um, up to a six-year lag here. So the sample period goes from 1990-2012 to 1996-2012. And these are, this is the differencing, one quarter, one year, four years, six years. And this is uh, where the, uh, uh, this is where the, uh, um, uh, let me just make sure. This is where we have uh, the dependent variable uh, is difference, but the other variables are not differenced in the first two columns. And this is where uh, everything is different. Our preferred specifications in the last four columns of the table. And as you, you can see, nothing much is going on there. So uh, what we are basically uh, uh, concluding is, uh, and we've got some slight changes in specification from our original uh, because these guys are using uh, uh, these guys are using uh, uh, census division. They're using region time interactions. Uh, and so we, we have to, for uh, purposes of comparison, we didn't have those in our original. And we can't find much support, therefore, uh, for uh, the idea that the effect of minimum wages are uh, uh, We don't find much support for the notion that lagged uh, minimum wage effects are a matter of concern. Um, there's our, my, basically my summary. So having played the game, uh, what are we to conclude? I think if you read uh, David's paper in the ILRR and you also look at the statement of research by uh, Allegretto, Juby, and Reich, there are, actually some, uh, there are actually some commonalities here. And that is 
in the selection of counterfactuals? What should we be looking for? Should we be looking for uh, synthetic controls or should we, and if we use synthetic controls, uh, do they actually um, speak against localized controls such as county specific uh, trends uh, in favor of a, uh, a, a wider uh, uh, comparison or uh, are, they, are they addressing localized uh, concerns after all? Um, so I, I think there's some commonality there in the research agenda. What should be the research agenda in terms of, if you like, the counterfactuals? Uh, now this paper you might find a little defensive um, because uh, um, it is responding to criticism and in the literature there is a great tradition of looking at uh, criticism, sometimes misstating what they're being criticized for in order to get the result they desire. And uh, I, I, I want to assure you that we have treated this at all times as a learning experience, to take criticism seriously and to see whether these results do disappear when you take account of, of them. And we would say there's some evidence that they uh, some modest evidence that they uh, are, are, are certainly sensitive, but uh, I think the overriding conclusion is that in this sector, um, uh, restaurant and bars, uh, the elasticities are, uh, if you like, uh, low and often insignificant. And in David's paper, uh, uh, this was the Itza version, I think, it's just that wonderful. Excellent. Excellent. We were, uh, you know, and we... we John Addison was right. No, <laughs> no, no. No, no, I doubt it says that, David. <laughs> but I think if we, um, if we take criticism honestly and seriously, uh, there is a way forward in this. And so how would I interpret my evidence? Well, I interpret my evidence, our evidence, if you like, in the context of a competitive model, frankly, in which elasticities are extremely low and where typically minimum wage increases have been uh, modest. And some support, uh, I adduce some support for that because when the minimum wage increases have been larger, uh, there is this tendency to see larger effects in if not in recession, but areas of higher uh, unemployment. And also the cross-country evidence is very strongly in support of David's conjecture about recession. And I've done some of that work uh, too. Um, so how do I interpret my evidence? Well, I would hope that it would stimulate research into the effects of minimum wages on a number of, uh, in a number of areas. For example, my data set can't, has got no information on hours whatsoever. And this is critical. And some of your work has shown that hours are reduced in these circumstances, even if employment isn't. This is very important for some of the themes we were talking about earlier this morning. So I'd like to see work on hours, more work on hours. I'd like to see more, more work on training and non-wage benefits. And here I'd like you to consider also adjustments along some other margins. There's a very interesting paper by Barry Hirsch with uh, uh, Bruce Kaufman and I think Zelenka, uh, which is coming out any day in industrial relations, which looks at adjustments of prices, profits, turnover, and performance standards. You know, the word performance standards getting the guys to work harder when the minimum wage goes up. So why don't we observe more dramatic, uh, uh, my, my argument is, would be, why don't we observe more dramatic effects on the employment aggregate? And I think there are some hints to this uh, in these other adjustments that are being made. And I'm also very much in favor of research along the Mir and West lines about the importance of dynamics. And in particular, what is the effect of minimum wages not so much on survival rates of firms, but on birth rates of firms? And here I'd like to uh, 
to plug some work of uh, my best PhD student, Pedro Portugal, at the Bank of Portugal with Ana Ruth uh, Cardozo. Uh, and uh, they have been looking at those sort of things. And those are the things that I am uh, led uh, to believe is important. So if I've learned something from Mir and West, I think it's, uh, it's redirected me towards that line of research. And uh, if I've learned something from the criticism uh, uh, of, um, it, was, it wasn't so much directed at, at, at us, but we were accused of sophistry at one point. Uh, if I've learned something from that, uh, that is, apply the methods, see what you get, and does it modify your previous conclusions? And if not, why not? And my attitude would be uh, always uh, towards favoring, unlike Mir and West, not a labor market imperfections approach, uh, uh, but uh, um, working in terms of a competitive model. As I said, the original paper was uh, was couched entirely in terms of a, compet of a competitive uh, model on which minimum wages intruded. So I think our results still largely stand, but uh, I'm conscious of uh, much more work is necessary. And to quote David, uh, minimum wages is uh, a gift that keeps on giving. Uh, in terms of research. And I think the, it's more open now than it's, it's been. Yes. Thank you.